Malaysia, a motorcyclist paradise with winding roads, a huge sense of freedom, and new sights everywhere you look. A country with one foot in the future and the other rooted firmly in history and tradition. It's a jewel in Southeast Asia. This week, I begin the journey of a lifetime, touring around Malaysia on a Harley Davidson. I start off on two wheels, end up on four. It's gonna be wild. I'm Jamie Dempsey, and I spent a lot of my life working behind the bar in one of the world's hippest cities, Los Angeles. But when the night's over and the sun comes up, I seek adventure of a completely different kind. After spending nearly 36 hours on planes, trains, and automobiles, I finally arrive in the most southerly state of Malaysia, Johor Bahru. It's the second biggest city in Malaysia and the starting point for my epic tour around this old British colony formerly known as Malaya. As this is my first time riding overseas, I'm going to need some expert advice in planning my trip. I've arranged to meet Janu from Big Loud Rides. His company runs motorcycle tours in Malaysia, so he's the perfect person to help me plan my route. And there I can pick up my bike. My first challenge is actually finding Johnny. Back home in LA, the streets are laid out in a grid system, so it's easy to find your way around. The streets of Johor are narrow, windy, and there seems to be no logic to how they connect. Still, it's good to be lost sometimes, as I get to see lots of interesting things along the way. I thought Johnny would be hard to spot, but in a town like JB, a big Finnish man surrounded by Harleys stuck out like a sore thumb. Hi, Jamie. Yuha, so nice to meet you. My Thank pleasure. You Once we got the map out, it became clear just how huge this journey was going to be. Malaysia is about a thousand kilometers in length, and I intend to drive around the entire country. All right, now we are in Johor. You have to definitely go to Desaru. Here you have crocodile farms, you have ostrich farms, you have wonderful beaches, small villages. The more I look at the map, the clearer it becomes that if I want to see everything he suggests, I'm going to need some serious planning. Perfect. I'm so excited to go. But now, I'd like to see what I'll be right. I have something special for you. What is it? The Harley Sportster 48, my favorite bike in the Harley range. It's raw and authentic, and just the right size for me. Blacked out and polished, this 1200cc Evolution V-Twin looks fantastic. With this bike, I'll be turning heads from here to Penang. English on. On the right-hand side here. Okay. Got it. Run, start. Well done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to go. And uh, stopping from the same uh, button. Excellent. Remember that this bike has pretty small tank. Fill it frequently. Okay. Here's your helmet. Safe ride. Thank you so much. All right, looks like I'm all set for my big ride. But first, I'm going to take a quick look around town. Johor Bahru is a big, sprawling city, but the historic center of town is small and very cool. Just casually walking around, there are so many interesting things going on. And because the city is right on the Johor Straits, there are some great sites oh. not usually associated yeah, with a big city. <laughs> I'm not sure what she's saying, but I guess it's funny. <laughs> the temperature in Malaysia is crazy hot, so I stopped for a drink and took the opportunity to get my local SIM card working. When traveling in a foreign country, it's essential to have good communications. Anything can happen when you're on the road, and I want to make sure I can call for help at any time. The network with the widest coverage and strongest signal is Cellcom. So for me, it's really the only choice. After successfully localizing my phone, I explored some more of JB's back street. I'm just walking down all the little streets in town, and there's so many cool things to see at all these little shops. What is this? Jackfruit. Jackfruit. Yeah. Nice. Oh, delicious. Good. Yeah, Good. very sweet. Back in the US, I read about this Malaysian adventurer who rode from the tip of South America to Prudhoe Bay, Alaska. 
and he's currently here in Johor Bahru. And if there's anyone that can teach me how to survive in a foreign country, it'll be him, especially when it comes to riding on the wrong side of the road. What took so you so long? Much for being weak. Well, you know, getting through this traffic. <laughs> well, it's easy, right? Yeah, no, not easy at all, but <laughs> I survived. Okay, step into my office. <laughs> we got lots to talk about. Yeah. Alex Wong knows what he's doing when it comes to biking. His solo ride across the Americas was a massive quest spanning some 19,000 miles. So I wasn't surprised to hear that he ran into some pretty strange people and some equally strange places along the way. You no, know, I saw some some interesting stuff. You know, was one in particular is uh, I came across a, uh, a SWAT team ambush. I arrived about five minutes after it all happened, and there were people on the ground, not moving. Oh my God. Yeah, so that was quite quite, quite exciting. Crazy. Yeah, I also uh, climbed a volcano, the Pacaya volcano, and exactly three weeks later it exploded, and there were casualties. So, <laughs> so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm lucky in the sense, yet unlucky. Yeah, I need to borrow that angel on your shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> okay, well, I'm about to go on my first big adventure, and I could use a few pointers to keep me alive. Okay, I guess the first thing I should tell you is you're in Malaysia. So when we start hitting the village areas, up in the kampongs, what we call the kampongs, mm -hmm. you have to be really careful, because no one really uses the indicators. So just watch out and uh, basically expect the unexpected. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't just words of wisdom that Alex had for me. He also gave me a new best friend for my travels, his book as a guide. I've signed it up to you right here. To Jamie? Let's ride. And ride we did. Alex took me on a tour of Johor so I could get used to the Malaysian roads and Malaysian traffic. As you can see, you gotta watch out for all these cars here. Because all the business vehicles get it right away. Yeah, the streets are really small. Traffic's so tight. Our bike's pretty damn big for this place, <laughs> isn't it? Walk the way for me. All the more fun, right? You're fantastic. Give me a five. Woo! <laughs> I keep forgetting about the traffic on the other side. I keep thinking they're going to be over here. I'm ready for some open road. These tiny streets and all this traffic is hurting my hands. It was great to have Alex hold my hand and give me some much needed confidence at the beginning of my journey. But it's time to venture out into the big wide world on my own. Stick around, because coming up, I visit a record-breaking glass temple and get out on track with ex-Formula One driver, Alex Young. One of the cool things I've noticed about Malaysia is that it seems to be culturally very diverse. Although the main religion here is Islam, there are a number of other religions and beliefs, which leads to a colorful combination of people and architecture. I was told to keep an eye out for one building in particular, the Glass Temple. Oh, wait a sec, no shoes allowed. Wow, this is a little bit like knocking on Emerald City's door. Hello? Hello, Guru. This is a major Hindu temple, as well as one of the oldest temples in Johor Bahru. Since it was reopened with its glass fittings, it's become one of the state's most famous tourist attractions. The temple is listed in the Malaysian Book of Records as the only glass temple in the country. It's yes. beautiful. How many yes. pieces of glass did it take to build? It's more than 500,000 uh, pieces. The glass is all uh, coming from uh, Thailand and the workers, the uh, experienced workers from Myanmar. And how long did it take for them? It is around uh, one year and six months, one and a half. I would have thought it would have taken a lot longer than that. Yeah. I'm very impressed. They are working day and night. Well, I notice it's not just the glass that makes this unique. I see a lot of different representatives yeah. of different faiths. Yeah. 
And is that unique to this temple, or? Yeah, it's it's unique also for me as a as a master in this temple. I believe that every religion is true. So I put all the masters of the religion, like Jesus Christ, like uh, Buddha, like uh, Guru Nana for the Sikh religion, and Hindu also. We got one lady there. Oh, I know. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. <laughs> yeah, that's Mother right. Mother Teresa. I love how this temple embraces all religions. There are so many different things to see and learn about the various beliefs. And I found it really inspiring. I got something very special to show you. This is a mural. This is my own idea. You see, the driver of the motorcycle is a Hindu. He fall down. The Muslim who wearing the sonko is helping him. And the Christian, you see, wearing the... He's got the cross uh, around the, cross the neck. Around, yeah. He's helping to, to take the motorbike. See, it shows that uh, religious unity is very important. When I walk in, I felt very peaceful. Yeah. And I feel that uh, sense of welcome. Yeah, thank so you. So I think you're very successful. Yeah. I definitely left Johor City with a sense of calm. The winding roads of Johor Bahru merge into decent highways very quickly. And as I open up the throttle, I feel my adventure beginning. So it's all eyes and ears from now on, and we'll see what we see when I ride and seek. I'm a huge fan of motorcycle racing, and I've managed to find my way to this old famous racetrack. Apparently, this circuit hosted the Malaysian Motorcycle Grand Prix back in 1998, as well as the Superbike Championship in 92 and 93. I'm dying to open up this throttle and see what this baby can do. The Johor Race Circuit used to be the only international racetrack in Malaysia until it was replaced by the Sepang International Circuit in 1999. These days, the track plays host to some local race series and is home to the superbike riders who want to push their machines to the limit. I'm lucky enough to arrive here on a motorcycle test day. That means anyone can take their bikes out. This isn't a track bike, but I'm going to take her for a spin anyway. I want to hear this engine roar. I was keen to push my bike to its limit around the three and a half kilometer track and I even had a vague desire to get my knee down. Thing is, my bike's made for cruising, not for racing. My heart was beating wildly when I dragged my foot pegs through the first corner, and it nearly stopped when my rear wheel skidded under braking. I settled myself down and took it real easy. I don't want to crash the bike this early in the trip. If I was going to enjoy this track, it would have to be with an extra set of wheels. And those curves were insane. There's no freaking way I want to be out here with those super bikes. <laughs> Thankfully, there was one man on hand to help me find my footing on this awesome track. Malaysian race legend and ex-Formula One driver, Alex Young. Alex has been driving since he was a boy. And in addition to Formula One, has competed in a variety of different classes. Hey, Alex. Hi, Jamie. Hi, very nice to meet you. Yeah, it's good to meet you too. It's been a long time since I've been down to Johor, actually. But uh, it's, a, it's a great little circuit. I'm a little bit scared of being on the track. I'm interested in hopping onto four wheels. And I hear you're the guy to teach me. But make me feel safe and tell me about your experience. <laughs> I've been driving for a long time now. See the bikes going around. Um, and uh, yeah, I did Formula One. Uh, that's actually Formula One is 10 years ago now. And uh, so yeah, I'd be happy to help you out. I like to go fast. And I'm a quick learner. So show me this car and get me ready to take you on. Take me on. Yeah. OK. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. <laughs> you guys jealous? OK, well, this is a Formula Renault car, and it's basically entry-level race car for, for Formula cars, basically. Why don't we try and get you into the car straight away, and then we'll talk a bit more about the car. Get in, just put your left foot in first, and then followed by your right foot. Just uh, wiggle your way in. Mm. Of course, that little red thing there, that's a fire extinguisher knob. All right. Uh, uh, don't touch that. OK. <laughs> Unless, of course, there's a fire. There's a lot of things to look out for in a race car like this. So I made sure I paid attention in class. Fortunately, Alex is an extremely patient teacher. And then to go up to the gearbox, pull it towards you. All right, that's just like my motorcycle. There you go. All right, I'm so ready to go. while to adjust to an extra set of wheels. 
and really fast ones at that. I could see that Alex was going easy on me, and I simply couldn't have that. So after a couple of tester laps, I decided to man up and push the car to what I thought was the limit. Time for the Formula One race driver to prove his mettle. Pretty soon, I was putting him under pressure, and I was feeling quite good about myself. That's when Alex turned up the wick and just disappeared. There's no way I'm going to be able to compete with Alex. So while he's running laps, I think I'm going to hit the bar. Can anyone help me get out of this thing? Anyone? Anyone? Driving any Formula Racing car takes a lot of energy, and I was exhausted after a long day's concentration. Time to kick back a bit. Well, that was just awesome. And while Alex is still going around the track, I'm in this great local night spot in Johor Bahru. It's called Los Malaya, and it's really retro and super cool. I've heard a lot of Harley riders hang out here, so hopefully I'll get to meet a few of them, and we'll compare stories from the road. It's always easy to make friends with other bikers. They're all interested in custom bikes, road trips, and of course, my tattoos. Yeah. When, uh, sometimes he gets a little beard. And it says, yeah. in one. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> What a jam-packed day. I started off on two wheels, ended up on four, met a real track legend, and an amazing adventure. And tomorrow, I officially start my journey. I'm pretty excited, but I'm also a little bit nervous because I don't even feel tired yet. I'm headed northeast towards Kota Tingi. I've been told to look out for a crocodile farm along the way, but the signboards seem a bit random, so I think I need to stop and ask directions. I'm not sure exactly if I'm on the right track, but maybe some of these guys can help me out. Salam Apiki, can you help me? I'm looking for a crocodile farm. Do you know? It turns out the word for crocodile is boy. He's my man. So, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Once we worked that out, I was on my way in no time. After making my way through some small winding roads, I finally made it here to this crocodile farm, and it's amazing. I don't know what I was expecting, but nothing like this. It's more like Africa than Malaysia. And from what I hear, this all started with one man and two crocs he crawled across the river. Hi, Irene. Hi. Mr. Ong, Hi. thank you for having me. Yes. So your grandfather started this place with two crocodiles. Yes. How many do you have now? About a thousand. A thousand. It's amazing to think that under these placid waters are a thousand crocs just ready to snap. But I felt a lot closer to them after my chat with their protectors, and even found out how to tell whether croc eggs are male or female. It's simple. If the weather is hot, the eggs are male. If it's cooler, then they will be female. Go figure. So hot, male, cold, female. Yes. It's feeding time here at the crocodile farm, and normally they don't let people feed the crocs, but I'm feeling pretty daring. So I'm gonna take this pile of chicken. It smells a little bit. See if I can get this guy to go. Here, crocky, crocky, Hi. crocky. Here, Hi. crocky. Come and get Hi. it. Dinner time. Hi. Oh! I tell you, these guys may spend most of the day in a state of some baked lethargy, but when they know food is around, it's amazing how fast they can move. <laughs> Woo, all right, my heart's had just about enough. I think feeding time's over. I've had a fantastic day here at the Crocodile Farm, made some new friends, learned a lot, fed the crocodiles, but now I think it's time for them to feed me. It only seems right. Oh, yeah. Don't worry, it's not anybody that you know. It tastes like chicken. Don't worry, it's chicken. <laughs> well, that was a lie. It tastes like crocodile. Just weird. I don't think I'll have it again, but that's the point of this trip 
try new things, and let the adventure unfold. So far, I've been riding in temperatures around 36 degrees centigrade. The heat and humidity are very draining, so I have to keep reminding myself to stop and take a break. One of the great things about being on the road in Malaysia, there are all these neat little places to stop, say hello to the locals, salam apiki. <laughs> and so I've just stopped at this neat little shop and I gotta get some water because I'm dying of thirst. You gotta stay hydrated here, it's so freaking hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Salam apiki. Mineral. Mineral, yeah. Ah, thank you. How much? One? Yeah. All right. Like I said. Maybe grab a snack. What's this? Prawn crackers? Fish flavored chips? Green pea snack. I think I'm just going to stick with what I know. Regular potato chips. And maybe I need a scarf to cover up some of this sweat. Let's see if we can grab this one. All right. What do you think? Drifting slightly off the beaten track, I meander along a narrow set of roads, occasionally getting hijacked by curious kids. You like my bike? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I'm curious about something I saw on the map earlier. Eventually, I managed to find it. From big lizards to big birds, I just arrived here at this ostrich farm, and I'm looking to see some big eggs. I don't know how many exotic farms there are in Malaysia, but I'd like to check it out. Now the only real thing I really know about ostriches is that they are flightless, like penguins, and like to stick their heads in the sand. But after chatting to my host, I learned that they are highly intelligent creatures. All of a sudden, it feels like we are the ones being studied, and not the other way around. Uh, he's curious, yeah, he's gonna give me a peck there, eh? Not so painful. It doesn't hurt? It doesn't hurt, yeah, oh, you're trying. You're I'm a little trying. scared. No, no. All right, I'll try. Yeah, just close yeah. it, uh, clench your fingers. Like this? Uh, yeah. <laughs> One more. One. Oh, it's not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, ostriches like these, okay, they, they are not aggressive. If they're aggressive, they use their leg to kick you, actually. I'm the most popular girl on Sesame Street, and I've got more than one big bird. Every journey has its good omens, and as it turns out, I was in the right place at the right time to find one of them. Amazing, I've really witnessed a real miracle. An ostrich egg straight out of its mother. It's still warm, and I'm lucky enough to get to hold it. Amazing, I can't believe this. We got here just in time. I was sad to leave my new feathered friends. But it was time to get back on the Harley and head off into the sunset. It's been an eye-opening day here at the ostrich farm. Wait a minute, this isn't my motorcycle. Anyway, on the way, arriba! Next week, I head north up the east coast in search of sun, sea, and sand. Visit a crystal mosque, build a boat, and almost get eaten alive by fish. <laughs>